Hello, this is Acoustic Freeze appearing on the, the Acoustic Editorial page. I wanted to talk today about something that I think needs to be addressed, and that is the subject of welfare. Now, in a comment, and this is specifically directed to Mr. Stefan Molyneux. You said in a comment section, in a video in which you appeared on Adam Kokesh's program on RT, that all welfare should be ended. Hmm. Strange. That for a man of liberty, there are a few things missing from that equation that I, I seem to think you may have mistakenly not realized. One, you deal with high-functioning people with disabilities, as an example. You have, per se, an idea that maybe they should all go to charities. There are many instances in, for example, the country of India, in which those people with disabilities are abused sexually, of course, they were referring to little girls, but it begs the question, if we all went for people with disabilities into charities, Mr. Molyneux, wouldn't their liberty suffer if they were forced to be institutionalized inside charities? Let's take a look for a moment. By providing some government assistance to people with disabilities, you are giving a hand up for them to become a taxpayer. I know of quite a few examples of people who are receiving assistance for their disability in the terms of whatever services may be provided and are working for a living at a private sector company. They are paying taxes into the system to provide for their own services. Now, you may be wondering, well, how is that necessarily going to be a free market system? It's not. I'll admit it's not. It's more socialism than anything else. And when I mean socialism, I take a quote from a man, a historian, as a matter of fact, who once said, quote, when I speak of socialism, I do not speak of the oppressive regime of the Soviet Union. I speak of a kind of socialism where there is redistribution of wealth, but civil liberties remain intact. Of course, I am paraphrasing historian Howard Zinn. Now, I, and what Howard Zinn is describing is that yes, the, na the national economy itself is socialistic, but you still have the right to disagree with one another, whereas in the Soviet Union you did not. If you had, if you had extreme socialism in the form of communism, in the Soviet Russian time period, what is the extreme form on the other end? It is state-controlled capitalism, otherwise known as fascism. Now, I've heard many professors explain that state that fascism is unrestrained capitalism. You may be thinking, well, isn't that the free market? Well, it's not necessarily the free market. Because when you have companies like Mantech, who have a large stake in making most of their profits off of government tax money, that's not a free market. And even then, 
There are those who are concerned that the free market leads to fascism. Because if you have an unrestrained, completely unrestrained market, what would prevent, say, a company from buying elections? For example, if I were to, in a free market societal setting, write out a check and say, here, I want you to vote this way. That in itself is unrestrained capitalism. You are purchasing a policy decision. And there are those who would argue that the unions do the same thing. You are correct. They do do the same thing. If you want to have a truly public related government, keep the unions and the corporations both out of buying candidates. Simply put, contributions are a form of bribery. Reality is, is that we probably will not change such a thing. On the subject of welfare, ending welfare for everyone, well, you got it partially right. Ending corporate welfare is a really good idea. Because if you are a company and you are crafty and savvy enough to stay on top of the competition in a setting where you don't get breaks or special privileges, then you really are a beacon of capitalism. However, to say that you should end it for individual working people, usually what happens in that regard, Mr. Molyneux, is that when you end welfare, for those who otherwise would not have access to opportunities, as in, let me put it to you this way, by cutting off assistance for basic needs, they would not be able to focus, per se, on the idea that they can advance up the social ladder. So in that regard, I would add that maybe if you keep the welfare for individuals, you know, those who don't make a lot of money, maybe then you can have a means to have a truly stable society of one in which Howard Zinn describes. This is Acoustic Freeze saying bye for now.